Today we're looking at the business trade cycle, um, which encompasses economic fluctuations. Understanding the business or the trade cycle. The output per person of most economies grows over an extended period. Um, so we see basically that GDP and GDP per person, we get more efficient, we have technological advances and so on. And so we see this increase of output per person uh, typically over time. Output growth virtually everywhere in the world though, it's uneven and it's irregular. In some years or months, real output may grow rapidly. In other years or months, it might grow more slowly and still in others, it might even decline. Phases of the business or trade cycle. The dotted line is going to represent potential GDP. Now, fluctuating around potential GDP, so just a reminder, potential GDP is like the PPF, where all of your available resources are being used efficiently. We're going to have real GDP that sometimes it's above um, potential and sometimes below. We go up and down, and this might happen. Okay, so what we've just wrote here, what we've drawn is real GDP. So real GDP that we've actually achieved. And it is fluctuating around the potential GDP. So when we are at uh, one of these points, this is known as a peak. Of course, we have a peak over here as well. When we're at the bottom, it's known as a trough. And we have some examples of troughs over here. And when we are in the upward phase and our output is increasing, we're going to call that an expansion. And when we're in the downward phase, uh, where output is, is decreasing, we're going to refer to this as a contraction. Okay, so the dotted line is potential GDP. The squiggly line is the real GDP achieved with peaks, troughs, expansion, and contractions. Expansion, that's when there's positive growth in real GDP. During growth, employment of resources increases, we're using more resources, and the general price level typically in the economy usually begins to rise more rapidly, and that's known as inflation. So that we're looking at average overall prices tend to go up in an expansion phase of the business cycle. At the peak, the cycle's maximum level of real GDP is reached, and it marks the end of an expansion Unemployment of resources has fallen substantially, so in other words, resources are being used, um, and the general price level might be rising quite rapidly. In the contraction following the peak, the economy begins to experience falling real GDP, which is negative growth. Now, it's important to realize this um, definition that's coming up. A recession is when, if the contraction lasts six months or more, so a recession isn't simply that the economy has contracted. The technical definition is when GDP has fallen for six months or more or two successive quarters. The trough is the cycle's minimum level of GDP or the end of a contraction. A trough is followed by a new period of expansion, also known as a recovery, marking the beginning of a new cycle. Phases of the business or trade cycle are irregular and unpredictable, and many economists prefer to use the term economic fluctuations. So it's fluctuating, the economy is fluctuating around potential GDP. If it wasn't irregular and unpredictable, if we had a crystal ball, of course, people would be making millions of dollars, but, uh, but these fluctuations are irregular and unpredictable. So the relationship between real GDP and unemployment. So this is really the first time we've talked about this. When real GDP grows in the expansion phase, unemployment falls. Uh, the reason why is if you are producing more stuff, you need more people to produce these goods, and so unemployment falls. 
In the contraction phase, when real GDP falls, so we're making less stuff, unemployment increases because we don't need as many people um, because we're not producing as many goods. So I'll just write that down. So as output increases, more people are needed, more workers are needed to produce, and as output decreases, fewer workers are needed to produce. The relationship between real GDP and unemployment. For every economy, there's a level of real GDP at which the economy experiences what we call full employment. This is also known as the full employment level of output or the full employment level of real GDP. And this is marked on the graph by YFE. So uh, Y for income or output, um, full level of employment. This is basically, uh, uh, like the PPF where, again, our resources are being used efficiently, um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that there is zero unemployment. We are going to look at that notion um, shortly. At the full employment level of output, there is still some unemployment known as the natural rate of unemployment. We can think of this as being un unemployment that is normal or natural for an economy, and we'll uh, follow up on this. There are many reasons why unemployment never falls to zero. At any point in time, there are people who are in between jobs, some who are moving from one geographical area to another, some who are training in order to get a better job, and some people who are temporarily out of a job. And there's also situations which um, we refer to as structural unemployment, where industries die out and industries emerge. And if um, people are unemployed because of an industry dying out, that's also part of the natural rate of unemployment. So if you think of it, you really wouldn't want to live in an economy where you were forced to always keep your same job, where you weren't allowed to go between jobs, where you couldn't move, um, where you couldn't do training in order to improve your skills and, and get a better job. Um, no one would want to live in such an economy, nor would we want to live in an economy where we're still producing um, horse and buggies um, because of not allowing for an industry to die out. It wouldn't make any sense. So therefore, even in the best of circumstances of an economy, there will always be some unemployment. Actual and potential GDP. So as we mentioned, the straight line, the dotted line, going through the cyclical line represents average growth over long periods of time, many years, and the economy's full level of output which is also known as potential output or potential GDP. I like to think of it as the output where your, all of your factors of production are being used efficiently. When actual GDP lies above the potential GDP or below potential GDP, there results um, what we call a GDP gap, and it's also known as an output gap. The output gap is simply actual GDP minus potential GDP, and it might be positive if it's above or negative if it's below. So the GDP gap, now we're going to be writing quite a bit on, uh, on this particular graph. But we will draw a very simplified thing of real GDP. We'll have it come up and down and up again. And um, again, to mark this as actual, GDP, whereas the dotted line is potential GDP. In terms of um, here being above, we have an output gap. And here below potential GDP, we also have an output gap. Um, in the case of um, above, it would be positive, and below, it would be negative. In an expansion, 
we know that unemployment falls. At um, anywhere above the potential GDP, where we've got actual GDP, exceeds potential GDP, we know that we have an output gap. And unemployment is going to be less than the natural rate of unemployment. In a contraction phase over here, we know that unemployment increases. We don't need as many people to be producing fewer goods. And if we're dealing over here, we've got actual GDP is less than potential GDP. Again, we've got an output gap. And unemployment in this case will be greater than the natural rate of unemployment. If we're looking at where actual GDP and potential GDP intersect, this point here, we would have no output gap. And also, we would say that potential GDP equals the full employment GDP, or in other words, that unemployment equals the natural rate of unemployment. So here, we can say that potential GDP equals the full employment GDP. In other words, unemployment equals the natural rate of unemployment. The trade cycle, deviations of actual output from potential output over short periods of time are not desirable. So the um, businesses, the government uh, do, do not like lots of fluctuations. When actual output rises above potential output, the economy often experiences a rising, a rapidly rising price level which is not good for the economy. And we will look at why inflation has its problems. We'll look at that later. When actual output falls below potential output, the economy experiences falling incomes and growing unemployment, also not good. Key macroeconomic objectives. Um, this has many asterisks. We haven't looked at this yet, but we want to um, look at reducing the intensity of these economic fluctuations, so these output gaps to minimize them. We want to achieve price stability. And another macroeconomic objective is full employment. So again, that does not mean zero unemployment, but um, that natural rate of unemployment or full employment. So let's say our goal was to um, reduce the intensity of economic fluctuations. And in doing so, we're going to achieve price stability and full employment. So let's say if real GDP was doing this, it's really fluctuating around potential. So again, we'll mark this up as real GDP. And the other line is potential GDP. 
if our goal was to reduce the um, the intensity, we would be trying to smooth out these fluctuations and make them smaller. We can't eliminate them, but we don't want them to be as intense. Other uh, macroeconomic objectives involve reducing this intensity of expansions and contractions, and this is aimed at making output gaps as small as possible. It involves flattening the cyclical curve in order to make actual output come closer to potential output, and it would eliminate or lessen the problem of a rising price level in an expansion by achieving price stability, as well as the problem of unemployment in a contraction. Let's say our goal instead was economic growth. What we'd be looking at, if this is our potential output, is for this to be growing faster. So at, this is supposed to be a straight line, I don't have a ruler, um, but increasing the potential output in this fashion. So this is how we would um, demonstrate it uh, with a diagram. So what we'd be trying to do is increase the steepness of the line representing potential output or full employment output. And in effect, this means achieving more rapid economic growth over long periods of time. And we'll be looking at this notion of how do we achieve economic growth in a few lessons. So here's a tester for you, albeit it's dated, but it comes from an old IB uh, multiple choice exam. And using the data, or actually from a data analysis, which, which you could well see in one of your data analysis, which is a paper two. Using the data, explain what phase the trade business cycle of the US economy is in. Now, this is a really typical type of data that you could see, and the students make a, um, quite a few mistakes on it. So if we were looking at the business cycle, and we're looking at this being a trough, this is a peak, this a um, contraction. And over here, an expansion. A lot of students will look at this and say, well, real GDP is going from 4.4 to uh, 1.8 to 0 0.8. Ah, it must be in a contraction. But if I were to ask you year over year, is real GDP still increasing? The answer is yes. So you cannot be at a contraction. Um, where we are is that we are still on an expansion phase, but because it is slowing down that growth, reaching sort of this peak where we would have zero change in real GDP, we are approaching that by, by seeing this figure here. We're not yet at the 0% change and where it's going to start to become negative. It's still growing and we're approaching the peak. Um, so watch out for these kind of data questions, because as I said, a lot of students will say, ah, well, because the, the rate of, of growth of GDP is slowing down, we must be in a contraction, which is false. The economy is still producing more than it produced the year before, albeit at a slower rate. 